for those of you uh, that were upstairs with me, uh, we're going to talk about how we start to build our offense. Uh, and the Read and React offense is what we use. This is what we will do with our fifth graders all the way up through our 12th graders. So our uh, these fifth graders are like 10 years old. Uh, so 10, 10 years old through 18 years old, we're doing the same thing here. Okay? And I, I had to ask Rick if he was okay with me saying this, but uh, we've run the Read and React now for six years. Five or six, I guess it's six years. Uh, and what we found is we want to run. Uh, we, the primary thing we want to do uh, is we want to get the ball up, up the court. I would rather get a basket before we even run the Read and React every single time on the floor. That would be okay with us. Uh, so we look at full court trips instead of being uh, a layer 16 or 17 thing. We, we look at this at flow uh, as kind of layer zero. So before we can even put in layer one, we need to know how to get down the floor. We need to know how uh, to, to sprint the floor. We need to know how uh, we're going to get organized once we get down the floor. And then most importantly, and I know I said this upstairs, the teams in our league all tell us the same thing. They say that what you do best as a, as a program is that you run down the floor and then you're in your offense before we even know what hit us. Okay? So in order to do that, you have to work on it every day. We do it through this full court trips. Very early in every one of our practices, we're doing this. We're keeping score, we're running different layers. Uh, we'll get to a point where we add a defense to what I'm gonna show you here, but we won't get there today. Okay, I'll talk a little bit at the end about how we do this. Uh, but right now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna just, I'm gonna teach our fast break just like I would teach it to our fifth graders, and then we're gonna run it, and then we're gonna build in each layer. Now by doing this, you get kind of a seamless transition from your primary break into the read and react, okay? Uh, if you do this every day, your players will just flow automatically into it. So for me to say, teach layer one first, then layer two, then layer three, then layer four, that doesn't work for us. Uh, and, and Rick and I have actually talked about kind of a reorganization of how to teach this. I think we were talking to some coaches at dinner last night about getting in layer one, four, and seven first to get ready for your first game. Uh, so there's some changes happening. The beauty of the read and react, in my opinion, are a lot of things, but uh, the two primary ones are this. Coaches who just take the read and react and run it exactly like it looks on the video, teach it one layer at a time, wait for, for players to get that layer and then move on to the next one. There's nothing wrong with that. That will work. But the great thing about the read and react is you can make it your own. You can take the read and react and say, you know what, with my coaching style, with the way I like to do things, with the way we like to run, this is how we're going to use it. Okay? It's really not an offense. The read and react offense, I know it is our branding and marketing, and I shouldn't be saying this as someone who works on the business side of things, but it's a system of teaching good offense. And so you just take it, and, once, and I see this all the time. The first year you coach the read and react, you're kind of one page ahead of the kids. You're, you're, you're in a situation where uh, I'm just ahead of, you know, I'm teaching this today uh, and, and, and I need to learn what I'm teaching tomorrow. After your first year, once you really get a grasp of it, you get a feel for it, your mind just explodes with ideas. All of a sudden, all these creative ideas and different ways to use it come in. I mean, you'll be sleeping at night and you'll wake up and say, ooh, a dribble act to a basket cut to a back screen into a pull screen. That'd be a great way to start off. You'll have all these ideas on how to use it. In order to do that, you have to put in the foundation. For us, the foundation is to get the ball up the floor. If you get a great shot, take it. If not, we're in the offense. And so this is how we'll take, uh, take it. Give me a, uh, someone who can inbound the basketball. All right, this is our inbounder. Now, we've gone away with positions. Truly positionless basketball. So we don't use one, two, three, four, and five. We don't use point guard, shooting guard, small forward. We don't use any of that stuff. We s simply use the names of the fast break spots. That's how we tell. If, we, if I put a kid in and say, hey, you go in and you be the inbounder. You go in and you're the outlet. Okay, so these are the only names we use for positions. And what it did was, uh, three years ago, we had a, uh, a senior who was going to play. We were still using numbers. We needed him to be the inbounder. He's a kid who's extremely athletic. Uh, he actually walked on at Arizona State this past season. Uh, he is our four, because we have our four inbound. Well, he's only 6'2". So as soon as he heard the number four, he's like, Coach, I can't be a power forward. I don't, I, I, I'll, be out, I'll be outmatched every time I play. 
it's like, it's like Corbin, you're not going to power forward. You're, you're just inbounding the ball. That's all it means. So we scrapped the numbers, we scrapped the positions, and we said, all right, we're just going to call these players by their fast break positions. So we have an inbounder. I need an outlet. Who wants to bring the ball up the floor? My man right here, number six. Our outlet is going to come free throw line extended back to the sideline. Okay, right about here. Arc free throw line extended back to the sideline. That's ideal. That's the ideal spot to get it. I need a right lane. So someone wants to run down the floor and shoot threes or dunk. My man, all right. And then I need a left lane. So you two are going to be my right lane and left lane. And then I need who's the big post player? You guys, you guys got one? Bruiser? Screener? All right, you're my man. Okay, so you're going to be now. What we do with this is this person, depending on our personnel, is either going to be a rim runner or a head hunter. This is a, this is a flex position. So either his job is going to be to run straight to the rim and try to get a, a ball for a dunk, or he's going to run up the floor and look to head hunt and set a screen. Okay? I'm going to show the rim runner one for right now because that's the more simple one, uh, and I'll talk at the end about the head hunter option. So, I got my inbounder, I have my outlet, I have my right lane and left lane. What do you think you do as a left lane? Yes. You're going to run the sideline to the corner. Okay, they're just down the left lane on the floor, right lane, you're going to run down the right lane to the corner. Okay? Big man, you're going to be the rim runner, you're just going to run straight to that rim, put your head underneath the rim, look for a dunk. Okay? Your job is to get the ball out of the basket as fast as you can, step out of bounds, get it to the outlet. Your job is to catch the ball as far up the floor as is safe. So if there's a defender hanging out right here, you need to move towards the ball. Okay? It's five on so there'll be no defenders, so you should be fine right there. Okay? All right, uh, everybody in the middle. Come on in. All right, I'll take the basketball. All right, so what I want you to do is I'm going to throw the ball up. You know, that means it went in. I'm just going to throw it to the bottom of the net. You're going to inbound. You're going to get to the outlet spot. My right and left lane are going to take off, and you're going to just go to the corner and stay put. Okay? You're going to run to the rim, and then you're going to pick a side and post up. Does that make sense? Okay, now, here's the key. When you do this, you need to sprint with your head down until you get to half court. Once you get to half court, you can look over your shoulder to see if the ball's coming. Make sense? Good so far? Okay. As you're sprinting and turning and looking for the ball, you need to stay wide. You guys need to stay wide. You need to go straight to the rim. Uh, you want to get the ball in, pass the ball to the outlet. You want to push up the floor towards the right elbow. Okay, that's what your angle is. You're going to run in towards the left elbow, trailing the ball. Okay, that's it. We're looking for all kinds of space here. Okay? Uh, to make this simple, on this first one, I want you to pass to the right lane for a three. Sound fun? I saw you shooting threes earlier. You did the six minute drill. You're, you're fine, right? All right, no pressure. Okay? If you miss, if Rick says this all the time, if you miss, everybody that's taking the camera, they'll just cut it right before the ball misses. So you're not going to look bad. Okay? Nobody's going to remember that you missed. All right, you ready? All right, so I'm going to have you guys move around in here, then I'm going to shoot the ball and you're going to run. Now, last thing, for my right lane and my left lane, I want you to get wide early. So I don't want you to run at an angle to the sideline. I want you to get outside this block here and then go up the lane. Okay? Being wide is extremely important. All right, ready? All right, move around a little, move around a little, move around a little. Shot! That's all right, we'll make the next one. Okay. That was pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you guys aren't loose or just are slow, but I think you can run faster down the court. A little cold. Okay, get loose. Guys on the bench, make sure you're loose when you come in, okay? All right, we'll, we'll warm you up with full court trips. That's no problem. Uh, I would say leave the ball alone. Okay, I think you touched the ball as it came through the net. You want to get away as fast as possible. You said, I got it, I got it. Get that thing out of the net and go. Okay? Don't let it. If you mess with the ball again, then I got to put you on the bench. So don't mess with the ball. Okay, that's not your job. Just do your job. Okay? Ball goes through the net, get your butt down the floor. All right, here we go. Move around. Shot. Better. That looked a little more like a fast break. Money. I knew it. I told you you were going to make the next one. Okay. So we start there. We just get the basics of where you need to run, how fast you need to run, how you're going to do it, and we just get it going. Okay? We're going to go to uh, another couple times here just to get a feel for it, look at a couple different options. Uh, this time I want you to pass to the left lane. I want you to drive it. Can you dunk? Try. Okay? Here we go. It just looks cool in the clinic. Move around. Shot. Okay. 
Uh, one last time here. You're gonna get in the middle here. All right, I'm gonna pass the ball through. I want us to look over the top right away to the rim run. So as soon as you catch, you might take one dribble or you might just send it. He's throwing over the top to you. You're gonna catch him. You're gonna dunk it. Okay? Don't get hurt. Here we go. Move around. Shot. Oh, that's all right. It's a good effort. Okay. So we get this in. And this doesn't take long. I mean, this is pretty simple stuff. All right? This isn't, we're not really meant to reveal here. This is just get wide, create space, get the ball up the floor, uh, know what your options are. Now, once they have this, and I'm not by any means saying they're, they're perfect at this, but they know it enough. Now we start moving into our layers. So we want to teach layer one. Okay, so I'll take this team and I'll say, you guys all know layer one? Say no if you don't, or yes. Layer one, pass and cut. You guys run reading reactor? Okay, so we're just gonna do layer one pass and cut. So, go to your fast break spots where you, where you finish. You're right under the rim, post it up someplace. You've got the basketball here, top of the right elbow. You're up top of the left elbow, okay? So when we go down there now, we're not gonna do an early offense thing. We're just gonna pass, cut, pass, cut, pass, cut. You're just gonna pass and cut, okay? What I wanna see happen is, we're gonna go five out here. So you're gonna elevate, you're gonna pop to the corner. All right, and then you're just gonna pass and cut for five passes and then for a layup. That make sense? You wanna practice it on this side or just go into it? You guys good? All right, let's go right from here. So now we're done with our fast break into layer one. I don't wanna see any pause, any stop. I just wanna see you run to your spot, elevate, you pop out, and we're in. Okay, here we go. We're looking for five passes and then a layup on a pass and cut shot. Elevate, good, pass, cut. Pass, cut, good. These guys got this all right. Pass, cut. All right, looking for a layup. There we go. There we go. Cool little clinic. I love it. All right. So there's layer one. You will be surprised at how quickly you can teach this offense by letting kids run up and down the floor and then get into it. They love this. Okay? That wasn't difficult. Now, with a bunch of fifth graders that haven't run this before, I'm going to take more time showing them what passing cut means. Okay? But pass and cut is just get down the floor, get spacing, pass and cut for a layup. Okay? That's our first trip. Now our second trip is going to be layer two, post pass and cut. So now, go ahead and uh, get to your fast break spots. You'll stay in the post this time. Okay? We're going to come down here and we're going to post pass and cut. So you're going to elevate still. We're four out, one in. Okay? You can elevate. You're going to pass. Either side, doesn't matter. Pass, cut, okay, just like we would in the game. You can either come off, set a screen here, and then shape to the ball, or you can stay put until it comes back to your side. But as soon as we can feed the post, we feed the post, we lay or cut for a leg. Okay? Now, I want to try to do both of these together. So we're going to go down, and we're going to do pass and cut first, and then we're going to come back and do post pass and cut. Does that make sense? You want to do just one at a time, or are we good with that? You guys are pretty good, I think. We'll go down and we'll just do pass and cut five out, and then you'll come back. We'll take it out of the net, we'll come back and we'll go post pass and cut. Okay, here we go. Move around. Five, yeah, five for the pass and cut. Shot. Okay, fast break. Nothing there. Pass and cut, five out. Player one. Pass, cut, good. Look for the ball all the way to the rim. All right, now take the ball out of the bottom. Run, 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 sprint, sprint, sprint. Push. Okay, now we're four out one in, stay inside. There it is, Laker cut. Dump that. All right. So right now we've got layers one and two in, and our fast break in a matter of 10 minutes. Again, with fifth graders, you gotta wait until they get it down, but then move on. These guys have it down, so I can move. We're gonna now go to dribble at. All right, so now you guys are gonna do the same thing you just did. You're gonna run down the floor, get loose now. All right, you're gonna run on the floor, you're gonna do pass and cut. You're gonna come back here, you're gonna do post pass and cut, layer two. And then you're gonna go out back down that way, and I want you to just dribble at somebody for a layup. Very simple. Okay, layer three, dribble at. We good? You guys are looking a little hesitant. You want me to break it down? Okay. Yeah, this means you dribble at somebody, he goes back door, you throw it to him for a layup. Yep. All right, how much are you interacting with you guys run? Run the offense? Just to be familiar with it. You're doing great. Ready? Move around. Oh, we're we'll running into the ball. Okay, take it 
it out. Push them off the floor, look for close pass and cut. Pass that side, go ahead and wait. There you go, good. Screen, post, cut, linker cut, a little bit wider. It's okay. Take it out, now we're looking for a dribble at Just pick somebody, dribble at him, give it to him to the left. Alright. Most times that's going to be a bounce pass. Most likely if he's going back dark, but that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so what else are we doing right now as we're teaching the offense? Conditioning. Yeah. You guys tired? Yeah, you don't look tired. You're getting to play basketball, right? Would you rather we line up and do some line drills instead? No. We got a basketball on our hands, we're moving up and down the floor, and we're teaching the offense. Okay? We've now done layer one, layer two, and layer three. The speed at which you do this, I have 30 minutes. The speed at which you do this depends on your player's uh, understanding of the offense. These guys are pretty good, they get it. So we're gonna do one more here before we show the whole thing. That's gonna be layer four. So what I want you to do now is exactly what you just did. Okay, make a bounce pass on that, uh, that layer three one, the dribble at. Okay, and then you're gonna go down that end, or come back down this end and finish. And I want you to do a circle of movement so that somebody's gonna drive to the basket. Now, how I want this to look is, get to your uh, fast break spots. I want you to push the ball all the way to here, okay? Get to the elbow, kind of bounce off, and get everybody rotated. So everybody's gonna circle move to the right. All right, after the bounce off, I want you to attack the rim, everybody circle again, okay? Whichever way he goes. You guys familiar with circle movement? Yeah, I think, I think Rick got circle movement from Belgium, so you should, you should be good. Yeah, well, you can either take it all the way to the rim or kick to somebody for a shot, okay? So if you got a good shooter out here, throw it to him. All right. Good? Layer one, pass and cut. Layer two, close pass and cut. Layer three, dribble at. Layer four is going to be circle movement. You're going to bounce off to start the circle movement and then attack. You ready? All right, move around. Shot. Good, get down the floor. Remember, don't look until you get to half court. Wide and much sprinting. Wide and fast. Laker cut. Ooh, the line back flare. Alright. We're gonna work on it. We're gonna practice. Good. Come on down now. Let's see some circle movement. Get to that spot. Get wide. Get wide faster. Bounce. Circle. Good. Drive. Circle. Alright. Go ahead and finish. Always finish. How about a round of applause? That's pretty good. First thing to do. So at this point with this team, I would stop and I would work on circle movement. Because I thought the first three layers were pretty good, but diagnostically circle, uh, circle movement, layer four, needed a little bit of work. So we would at this point now say, okay, let's go, let's go over layer four again. And we would start our bounce off series. Okay? Uh, but I'm gonna show some of that bounce off series just a second, we'll get you guys involved. Uh, but first I want to show one more thing with the full court trips. So what we like to do is work on our early offense opportunities and then go into the layers. So you guys are going to go seven trips. Okay, you need some water, good? All right, you guys are young, all right? I would need water, I'd be laid out over there. I'm fat. Uh, all right, so you guys are going to go right lane, shot, left lane, Shot, rim runner for a shot, and then you're going to go layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. You handle that? Okay, so it's early, seven trips, right lane, left lane, rim runner, you just go right across, okay, and then you're going to go layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, and I'll call them out for you, okay? Right lane, left lane, rim runner. Ready? Feels good? Go. Shot. Seven trips here, right lane for a shot. Boom, everybody crash. All right, get to your spots. Maybe we are tired, that's okay. Get to your spots. Left lane for a shot. There we go. Down that floor, good. We're rim running right now, right now, good. Shot, get down that floor. See if you can work the inbound, you gotta do to get the ball out of the basket. Now we're looking for pass and cut. Elevate, get to the corner, pass and cut, good. All right, now we're looking post pass and cut down here. Come on, sprint, sprint. There it is, good. Look inside. Laker cut. 
finish. Rebound is there, good. Get it, push. Bent your lat, get somebody to your lat. Yep, let it talk, let it talk. Good, finish there. All right, now I want to circle movement. Start with a bounce off, everybody circle. Okay, here it comes, the elbow. Bounce off, circle right, circle right. Okay, now it's attacking. Kick, that's all right. Circle movement, we need to work it. It's okay. That's pretty good. I'll have another round of applause on that. So, in seven trips, we've now, now, at any point, during those trips, did you see us stop and set and call something? We're, just, we're in the offense. Our secondary break is the offense. We're comfortable. What you don't see right now, what we add once we get good at this, what you don't see right now is the defense. What's the defense doing as they're coming down the floor and getting into circle movement or getting into pass and cut? They're trying to figure out who the heck they got. They're getting back, most defenses sprint back to the lane and then match up. Well, they're matching up with someone who's already into a cut and already running offense. That's tough to guard. To me, the secret of the read and react is this. Get up the floor, get an easy basket if you can. If you can't, you're already running your offense. You don't have to stop. Teams that can do that are tough to guard. Teams that can do that have a lot of fun playing the game. Uh, we went from running the Princeton offense, scoring 42 points a game, to running Read React, scoring 68 points a game in one season. And we had a different, different uh, level of player that second year, but still, I mean, this is fun. The Read and React lends itself to running. Okay, so uh, because I've got seven minutes here, uh, because I noticed as we did this as a diagnostic uh, that circle movement is a little weak with these guys, we're going to go into some circle movement drills. All right, so I want five out. Give me a basketball in the corner. This is our 5 on 0 bounce off drill. And I apologize if you guys have seen this before, but it's, it's the best drill I know to teach circle movement. Uh, yeah. So you're in a 5 on spot there, kind of free throw line extended near the top, free throw line extended corner. You are going to drive, try to get a foot in the paint, okay, and then bounce to that next spot. So you're driving here and you're all circle moving. You're coming all the way underneath. You're going to bounce off, okay, to here, and then you're going to attack again. Okay, but I want to add one thing. Except for the baseline runner, because you won't have time. When he, when he drives and you circle move, when you get to your spot, I want you to shot organize and go through a, a visualization jump. Does that make sense? So go ahead and just drive real quick here. Just boom. When you get to that spot, pretend you threw the ball. Exactly right. Now, as soon as they're all set, you attack again. Boom, shot organization, pretend you threw the ball. Wait till they're all set, now attack again. Okay, bounce off. Boom, attack again. Get there, sorry. Any shot? Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. The, the jumpers you just took. Did the ball go in? Always. Okay? You make 100% of your visualization jumpers. Don't ever shoot a visual, visualization jumper that climbs off the rim or air balls. Okay? The reason I say that is most of you took that shot, you didn't even look, you just kind of moved to the next spot. Okay? It's okay to watch it go in. Go ahead and pose. All right, go ahead and watch that thing. Woo, yeah, switch. Let's go ahead and say switch, okay? Get yourself feeling good. Now, you're in that right corner right now, or that corner, right? Now what we do is we come back this way. So let's do this full speed, okay? Now you're gonna attack with your right hand. You're gonna circle right every time. Run on the baseline here. Let's see those visualization jumpers, and I wanna see a bunch of switches. Switch, I love it, you said switch. I love it. Yep, every time. You can say so pretty if you want. Good. Now, I know in the States, and this may not be true here because you guys actually uh, care about skill development. Uh, in the States, we have a hard time. How often do we practice this dribble? Okay, going backwards. You guys probably do. In the States, we never practice that, and then we ask them to do it. So this drill allows you to work on some things that you don't practice very often. Okay? So we would go from 5 on all on this. Uh, into, we never go five on five on five. We'll go into some three player drills that use it. We'll go into some three on three that use it. And my favorite thing to do, can I pull one guy that's cold over there? Any of you guys feel like you can get in and play some defense maybe? Yeah, come on in, it's okay. Do you guys have, can I get a defensive team? Like, do you have a different color? Do you reverse or anything? Can you just give me three on defense? Uh, and these are just, these are my two favorite drills to do to work on circle movement. The reason we're doing that is when we ran our fast break, I noticed we're not very good at circle movement yet. Okay, so we're going to work on it. 
we do this with fifth graders. So this is what we'll be doing with fifth graders. These guys are way better than what I'm normally working with in this presentation. So uh, we should consider ourselves lucky. You guys are going to be on offense. Three on three. We'll at the top and two free throw lines extended. Orange, you're guarding them. We're going to play three on three, but there's, there's one simple rule. You can only score off of a bounce off. Okay? So if you drive, if you can get all the way to the rim, go ahead.